Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Star Guide Sunday. In this week's episode, we've got a bunch of new images, including the Idris Utility Ship, Console Peasants Get Rowdy, and the Drake Herald is going on sale. With so much information and so little time, let's get this started. First up, let's begin with some brand spanking new Reclaimer images. These appeared around six days ago and demonstrated the conceptual size of this badass salvage ship. As you can see in these images, a single Hornet is not quite small enough to fit in the rear cargo hold area. However, this Reclaimer isn't technically built to haul large fully functional ships. The captain of this Reclaimer could easily chop the wings off and you'd be set. Moving on, we've got 10 for the chairman. Now, usually I skip this in my Star Guide Sundays because the questions asked are either just bad or no new information is given. This week though, we actually got some mentionable news. First, user Jormanda asked, in the PU, will the planet side environment change based on economic fluctuations of that planet? Chris Roberts responded in saying that all things in the Persistent Universe are subject to aging from builds and ships to items and even characters. Specifically regarding Jorman's question, the economy will indeed impact the look of fixed buildings, so the more prosperous a place is, the better upkept the buildings are. The second question I found worth mentioning was from Drum, who asked, If you die while in EVA, what happens to your ship? The simple answer to this is that your ship will remain in the instance you died in for anyone to salvage or appropriate for themselves. When you respawn on a planet after being rescued, an insurance claim will be provided as long as you have insurance. Now, you could still try and get back to where you were and rescue your ship or even have a friend go pick it up for you. Doing this would prevent your insurance premiums going up and any costs associated with a replacement ship. Alright, so with that out of the way, who wants to see Star Citizen come to the PS4 and Xbox One, huh? Anyone? Y yeah, I, I didn't think so. An article published on Gaming Bolt titled 15 Reasons Why Star Citizen Needs to Launch on PS4 and Xbox One came out October 22nd. This faux journalistic clickbait excuse for gaming media has been taking its rounds around the internet. I first found this out, ironically, on the subreddit PC Master Race, and soon after on the Star Citizen subreddit. This article makes wild assumptions and outright falsehoods, from claims that cross-platforming in the Persistent Universe will be possible, to consoles having better spec to performance factors, nearly every single reason given was ill thought out. Now, don't get me wrong, just because I'm dismissing this article doesn't mean that Star Citizen could eventually come to consoles. In fact, I would welcome our gaming brothers because the more citizens, the better. However, Chris Roberts already made a firm stance on this issue nearly one year ago to date. He stated, Star Citizen is a PC game. It will never be dumbed down to a lesser platform. We will not limit the input options or supported peripherals to the lowest common denominator. We will not pass on features and technology just because they will only run on some hardware configurations. So fear not, the PC is the platform of Star Citizen. Anything else, if it happens at all, will just be after the fact. Moving on, I'm going to go into a new lightning round of random images. These are images taken from official CIG sources, interviews, and more. First up, we've got a brand new image of the Redeemer. For those not familiar, the Redeemer was the first place winner of the Next Great Starship contest. Now, the reason why we know this is the Redeemer is if we take a close look at these little nipple sticks. And yeah, so what? I'm calling these nipple sticks. You want to fight about it? In the official Redeemer image seen here, the exact same nipple sticks are seen in the exact same position as the official CIG concept. Next in this lightning round, we've got the Mustang. It's nothing too special, but definitely shows off the incredible cockpit visibility of this ship. Following the Mustang, we have a quick shot of what I expect to be part of the FPS module. I bet some money that Cubby Blast is the in-game store that we saw last week that sells weapons, ammunition, and equipment, and allows you to test fire those weapons. You'll see more of this later in the video. Next up, we've got some brand new ship weapons taken directly from the file assets. There are a ton of new weapons to look at, however, some that I thought looked particularly menacing were the 35mm dredge gun and the Preacher Armaments Omega-1. Keep in mind that these are game file names and may not reflect the actual names when they go live. 
With ship weapons, we also need ships. In this image, we're looking at the Starfarer Modular Corridor System. Now, while no ship will be quite as modular as the Caterpillar, it seems that the Starfarer is taking some notes from the Caterpillar design. My guess here is that these two structure lines are where the modular pieces connect. In this image, we can see this Starfarer is set up with complex piping, most likely built for the base fuel variant. We've known for quite some time that you can set the ship up to carry foodstuffs and other non-liquid cargo, but at a performance loss when compared to actual fuel. That being said, this corridor is a possible representation of future Starfarer variants and how the pieces are fit together. Finally, on this week's Image Lightning Round, we've got the Idris, or more specifically, the Idris Utility Ship. Back in March, the jump point issue shown here displayed some details regarding the development of this utility ship. The ship comes stock with the Idris and is built to rescue pilots, maintain, and perform other tertiary functions for the mothership. Now, in a recent blog post on GameDebate.com, they were given this sick image of a ship we have never seen before. However, after a bit of research, we discovered that this, this is most likely an updated version of the Idris utility ship. When compared side by side, you can see that both ships maintain the metal bars around the curve of the cockpit. Likewise, the engines and landing struts are almost identical with the protruding feet at the base of the struts. Finally, the rescue pods as seen in the jump point are also identical, which services the rescue role of this utility ship. Now with the image lightning round over, let's move on to official news from Reverse the Verse. This is going to be a quick bulleted list, so sit back and enjoy the sneak peek from ATV number 18. First, the Gladiator may be flyable before the Avenger, but even if it is, the Avenger will be coming very soon after. The Avenger will feature four models, the base plus three variants. The Carrick is currently very slightly bigger than the Constellation, and the whole C is in very early concept phases. The Carrick will go on sale after the Drake Herald, which we'll talk about later. Finally, CIG has given a tentative yes to request that they show up at PAX South. This is great news, as I will be, of course, attending. Talking about PAX, if you are interested in attending PAX Australia, event details have been posted. Next week on November 1st, CIG will be debuting the next stage of Star Citizen. I'm almost positive this will be the FPS module reveal, so anyone in and around Melbourne, go get your tickets and enjoy. The event starts at 9pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. For those of you in the States, this is 5am Central. I for one will be up at the crack of dawn, so I hope to see you in the stream. Also coming next week is the concept sale for the Drake Herald. The Drake Herald is a small armored ship designed to transport valuable data and information from point A to point B. With powerful central engines, advanced encryption software, and an armored computer core, the Herald is one of the most unique ships in the universe. This ship will go on sale either Friday or Saturday and has been confirmed by Ben Lesnick to be priced at 85 US dollars. My guess is the ship will become available during the PAX Australian stream just just like the 890 Jump was presented at Citizen Con. Talking about ships, CIG revealed this week their ship pipeline development structure. The ship pipeline is simply the process in which a ship begins at initial concept and moves to final production. The article posted on CIG's front page is very detailed and lengthy and requires a video all on its own. That being said, I've left the link in the description below for anyone interested. However, there is one section in this article that I found particularly interesting. In this massive chart, we can see a list of known and unknown ships in current development and what they will be in the next development stage. For example, the four Constellation models are currently hangar ready. In the next stage of development, as dictated in the, by the ship pipeline, they will move into flight ready, which means that they can be taken into Arena Commander. However, if we scroll down and look at the Idris M and P, they are currently in the concept ready phase. Whenever the next stage of development occurs, they will move from concept ready to hangar ready. Now, there are many ships here that we have not seen, or have only seen brief mentions of. Starting from the top, we have the Manticore, a few of the Mustang variants, the new Corvette, which is replacing the Idris as it was upgraded to a frigate, and the Xi'an Volper. Keep in mind that this list is not fully inclusive, and some ships which have yet to be revealed are not even included. Giving us this information and name drop fits with CIG and the Perpetual Cocktease. Damn it, Chris, you're killing me! 
Finally this week, CIG published a new fan spotlight covering voice attack profiles. For those that are unfamiliar with voice attack, it is a software that accepts voice commands and converts them into keyboard strokes. As an example, I could say shields forward and my ship would automatically divert power to forward shields. Anyways, in this fan spotlight, CIG shows off a myriad of fantastic profiles created by fellow citizens. One in particular was the user Confused Monkey and his Anna profile. I actually enjoyed Monkey's profile so much that I made a tutorial that is featured in his original post. If you are interested in voice attack and the Anna profile, I've left a link in the description below. Alright folks, that's it for this week's Star Guide Sunday. As a side note, I did not cover the FPS module AMA as there are already fantastic summaries created within our community. That being said, next week I will be covering PAX Australian news just like CitizenCon and GamesCon 2014. If you are interested in up-to-date information and analysis of everything Star Citizen, hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the verse.